Good morning again, and good morning to those joining us online as well. It's great to have you here, visitors as well. I see some new faces as well, so welcome everyone. Um, so over the last uh, couple of weeks, we've just been following the Advent stories of, around Christmas. And when you start looking at the birth of Jesus and some of the events that were happening around Jesus' birth, you start to see that there is something different, obviously, isn't there, about Jesus' birth compared to other people's birth. Um, and that's what I wanted to talk about a little bit today before we get to Christmas, is what is so different about Jesus' birth? What is so unique about Jesus' birth? Jesus' birth gives us a little bit of a glimpse about what it looks like when the supernatural meets the natural. It's a little bit like the superhero movies. Obviously, you've seen like Superman and Thor, and it's a little bit like this. So you've got this supernatural power that comes to Earth. And you know, like Superman, who's got all these amazing powers, and and he comes into earth and everyone just looks at him like and thor when he comes chris hemsworth with the big bulging muscles you know and, whoa you know i wish i could be like that um but there's something different about jesus compared to like superman or thor see superman and thor when they came to earth they came with their powers all right whereas when jesus came he surrendered his powers he only revealed his power in certain times just to reveal who he was but for the most part jesus surrendered himself to god's will and jesus is where we find the supernatural meets the natural and when jesus arrives on earth it's like a new realm if you like if you talk about you know movie sort of themes a new realm opens up to us and angels begin to appear around us they start to reveal themselves to us a little bit similar to the some of the old testament accounts of like say abraham or joshua or or daniel where angels reveal themselves and you start to see that these things start to happen, happen when God's presence starts to enter into our world and the supernatural starts breaking into the natural. The angel Gabriel appears to Mary and heralds the message, announces the message about Jesus' arrival. We say, hark the herald angels sing right that song a herald is someone who is appointed to oversee ceremonial proceedings example for a royal wedding or royal arrival the herald is also a sign of something that is about to happen as well so this first visit to to mary is kind of a private quiet affair Okay. Mary is just out in the, you know, in her little village of Nazareth, and this angel appears. This is obscure uh, village, and he tells her that the Holy Spirit is going to overshadow her. her Holy, the Holy Spirit is going to come upon her, that the power of the Most High God is going to come upon her. It's going to overshadow her. Whenever the Holy Spirit comes, if you look in the, the patterns in the Bible of the Holy Spirit, whenever the Holy Spirit comes, it is an image of power. It's an image of like a wind of fire rushing in. It's an unstoppable move of God. And this is what the angel is heralding that the Holy Spirit of God is now coming in. And he says, your baby, Mary, your baby will be holy. 
he will be set apart and he will be called the son of God. Now the son of God, he says he will be the son of God in the sense that it is he is conceived by the Holy Spirit, not in a literal sense that God has a mate and that Jesus is born out of conception with the you know with God and another female it's not like that the Holy Spirit just comes upon Mary and this miracle happens the Son of God is also like a title that is attributed to Jesus that he is God in flesh and blood you will find the title son of God in the Bible that's also referred to other people as well. And also the nation of Israel itself is also often referred to as the child of God or the children of God. Most of the kings in Israel were referred to as the son of God. Angels and other pious people were often referred to as the Son of God. So the same title is given to Jesus, but there's a little bit of a difference about Jesus. Difference in the sense that he possessed the same nature as God. He existed before he even came to earth, as we've been exploring through the Gospel of John in our series. So again, as Jesus is arriving, this is an image of the supernatural invading the natural. The Holy Spirit is invading the earth. The kingdom of God is like an army descending upon the earth and upon the kingdoms of the earth. It's an image of battle, if you like, or revolution. Last week I talked about the fact that have you ever thought of Christmas as a revolution? And this is what's happening. This is one kingdom, God's kingdom, is now revealing itself and coming up against all the kingdoms of the earth. Salvation, the work of salvation and God's plan is now starting to unfold in the world through the birth of Jesus Christ. It is the greatest revolution we have ever seen. Even Jesus says in Matthew chapter 11, verse 12, he says, he says this about the kingdom of God. And from the time John the Baptist began preaching until now, the kingdom of heaven has been forcefully advancing and violent people are attacking it. Can you see the tension now between God's kingdom and earthly kingdoms? between God's love for people and our own rebellious hearts pushing against that and challenging that. But there is no power on earth that can stop the power of the Holy Spirit. This revolution was now underway and Jesus was coming and there was nothing that was going to stop that. And the angel lets Mary know, again, he, he gives her that sign. Look, this is going to happen to you, but even Elizabeth is six months pregnant now, and she was barren in her old age. The Holy Spirit has also come upon her and is reminding her of all the promises that God made to Israel and he says the word of God will not fail. After 400 years of silence in Israel when no prophets came since Malachi, God is now starting to do a work in Israel. And the Savior is coming. And the arrival of John and Jesus is the arrival through a barren woman and a young virgin girl, where the supernatural and the miracle of God is starting to happen. And God does this in such a way where it becomes a sign that God is about to do something. It is all against our natural laws and it gets everyone's attention. God's word always remains true. God's promises are always true in our lives. 700 years before Jesus was born, Isaiah made the prophecy about Jesus. And he says to King Ahaz, 
All right then, the Lord himself will give you the sign. Look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. Isaiah's prophecy was one of hope in the midst of a lot of stuff that Isaiah was talking about, about God's punishment coming on Israel because of their rebellion, because of their idolatry and, and worship of other pagan gods. But even within that punishment, God gives this promise of hope. And King Ahaz, as he's talking to Isaiah, he didn't want to know about it. He didn't want to know, a, he, he didn't want a sign from God. He didn't want to test God, but God says, I'll give you a sign anyway. And he says, the virgin will conceive. And the hope of that prophecy 700 years ago, or prior to Christ, I should say, was Emmanuel. This child will be called Emmanuel. That is God with us. Jesus is called Emmanuel. God with us. So the power of the Holy Spirit is now coming through and over the natural, through the barren woman, through the virgin woman, and they will conceive through the power of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will overshadow the natural. God has the power to create new life from nothing. He has the power to raise the dead. He has the power to give you new life. And so following this announcement from the angel, Mary breaks out in praise, praises to God, and she sings in joy about what God is doing and that the Holy Spirit is now about to move amongst their people. A bit like Zechariah, as we studied Zechariah's prophecy the other day, Mary's song is also like a revolutionary song. If you, if you look at the words of, of her song closely, you will start to get an idea of, uh, you know, what they are thinking within their context and how they, how they sing praises to God compared to how we sometimes sing praises to God. Mary's song is a revolutionary song in the face of oppress, oppression, in the face of powerful oppression, oppressors. And God demonstrated through history that he keeps his promise. He's still working through our barrenness. He still guides us in our wilderness. And he is a light to us in times of darkness when we lose hope. Mary says God notices the poor. God notices the lowly and the humble servants. He remembers those who are lowly and he includes them in his plans. And he says he will also scatter the proud and he will fill the hungry with good things. These are the songs of poor people. These are the songs of refugees, asylum seekers. These are the songs of those who are suffering, not those who are living in wealth and comfort. This is where that song is birthed out of, out of oppression, out of persecution. And the gospel is the arrival of the supernatural power and the presence of God making his home among us. It is the revolutionary good news where God's gospel turns this whole world upside down. And the good news is unfolding to this day as God demonstrates his love and his power over and over again. And he brings hope 
to the lost, overflowing with love and grace into the world. Now, a visitation from an angel is not an everyday experience, is it? It's a difficult story to kind of get your head around. Has anyone here ever seen an angel? No? You have? Yeah, and I believe you. Before I was a Christian, I lived a very active Muslim life as a Muslim, right? Now, you know, I've shared with you the story of my conversion of when Jesus appeared to me. And I was a bit like that vision that Mary had or that visitation from the angel. Something happened, something extraordinary happened, something supernatural happened because I didn't want to surrender to Jesus. But Jesus appeared and he put his hand on me and he said, Farad, it's time. Now, if that was just a fleeting thought in my mind, I would have just forgotten it. But that moment has stayed with me to this day. And that's what keeps my faith strong. That was the point of conversion. But let me tell you another story. About a year or so before that encounter with Jesus, I was, as I said, I was living as a Muslim. And I was out in Sydney one night with my friends. We were out night clubbing. Okay? And we were out in George Street in Sydney. And I don't know, it was probably about one o'clock at night or something like that. And as you do when you're young and single, you get a kebab in the middle of the night because you're hungry at one o'clock. So we, are, we, we went to this kebab shop right on George Street. And I'm, an, I'm a very, you know, I'm a Muslim at that time. I'm practicing Muslim at that time. And so my friends and I, we stopped by this kebab shop um, and we were just getting some food. My friends were in the shop and I was just standing just outside, this, outside the shop on George Street. And right there on the corner of George Street and I don't know if it's King Street. Anyway, I, you know where the cinemas are on George Street? Sort of that end, right across the road from the cinemas. So I'm standing there, and right near the traffic lights, there's a group of Christians singing some songs. I'm like, oh, great. They're going to, this lady starts coming up to me, and I'm sort of kind of stuck there with my, my friends are in the shop, and I'm like, I can't get away. And these guys are singing some songs, and I'm like, I'm just trying to ignore them. And this nice, friendly, you know, el not elderly lady, older lady comes up to me and says, how are you? I said, oh, good, good. Yeah. And... Uh, so we started chatting a little bit, and um, suddenly inside of me, that passion that I had, even as a Muslim, was to defend Islam. So all of a sudden, I find myself in this little, sort of I'm trying to tell her that Christianity is wrong. So even as a Muslim, I was kind of an evangelist. And I'm trying to tell her that Islam is the only way. And the, the Bible that you believe in is corrupted and it's all wrong. I was just carrying on as you do. And, and she just kind of, there was something about this lady, right? She didn't argue or debate with me or anything like that. And just then my friend started coming out again. And I said, oh, I got to go, I got to go. And she just looked at me and she said, I'll see you in heaven. That's, that's what she said. And she, and she just had this twinkle in her eye. And I've never forgotten that. I never forgot that. To this day, I can still remember her face. And she just had this most beautiful smile and just this, this twinkle in her eye. And she said, I'll see you in heaven. And I was, I, was, I was literally like this. I was walking away because I wanted to get away from her. I was walking away and I'm looking at her like, what did she just say? That's just really weird. 
I don't know, maybe she was an angel. Who knows? I don't know, but she was certainly sent there from God. Okay. She puts a seed there that about some time later I turn to Jesus. And I know, I'll see her in heaven. I'll see her in heaven. And God, I'm sure you you might not have had an experience like that, but I'm and that doesn't mean God's not real. Okay. If you ask around enough people, you will hear stories like that. You will hear stories like that. And I hope that would soften your heart. Just because it hasn't happened to you doesn't mean it doesn't happen. Okay. You ask around, ask around other Christians, even ask around non-Christians, and they will tell you they've had some sort of encounter with the supernatural. God's Spirit has invaded our planet. Okay. And the birth of Christ is one of the most visible, one of the most powerful events in history that's happened. It is one of the strongest, most visible fingerprint of God on our planet. When you look at the birth of Christ, the life of Christ, his death and his resurrection, it is the supernatural fingerprint of God in our lives. And salvation has come into the world through Jesus Christ. And Jesus is gathering people for his kingdom. The kingdom of God is now at collision with the kingdoms of this world. Evil powers, evil oppressors, they are all now being confronted by the gospel. And it begins with us in our hearts. The gospel brings new light and new life into the world. One day Jesus will return. And he won't be coming back as a baby in a manger. But he'll be sitting on an eternal throne surrounded by all the glory of heaven. And we have only been given just a little glimpse in our natural world of the supernatural that is about to come. And one day it will be visible to all. Let's pray. Our Father God, I pray, Lord, that you would keep our hearts soft to the gospel. And I pray that you give us eyes, Lord, to see what you are doing in the world, just like I ran into that stranger on the street. You are always working around us. And I pray, Father, that our spiritual eyes will be open so that we can see your work around us. Keep our hearts soft to what you are saying in our lives. Give us ears to hear. And Lord God, help us to follow you and to keep our faith strong in our lives, to trust in you, to trust in your promises that you will be back. Your word never fails, Lord. And we hang on to that. Even when our faith is weak, when we fail in our morality, when we fail through temptations, when we fail in our relationships, we need you, Lord God, in our lives and help us, Father, to walk in your love, your grace, your forgiveness, Father. I thank you, Lord, for your mercy on us. And remind us again, Lord, of your power over this earth when we feel powerless, when we feel abandoned and lost. 
you are all powerful and that you've got everything in your hands. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. <clears throat>